<laughs> there you go. That's what I mean. It's a rhino beetle larva there. You can just eat them, eat them raw. When they're cooked, they're a bush delicacy. And at this time of year, there's plenty of them here. Ready for this? Be this, sir. Gabokka. Oh my goodness! I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to need to eat for a week after this one. Ooh. I'm in Zambia, following the mighty Zambezi River. At 2,200 miles, it's the fourth longest in Africa. foot high, the biggest single waterfall in the world. Hanging out in the spray is quite a ride. Below the waterfall is a Potoka Gorge. The power of the water here is incredible. These rapids are killers and people die in them every year. They're dangerous enough in the raft, but all I've got for protection is this. I'm about to experience the awesome power of one of the world's great rivers with just my bodyboard. It's a tongue of the rapid right down the center. I'm going to show you how to make it out of this alive. Here it is. I'm ducking under the wave as it hits me so I don't get battered. Need to get ashore. I want to be heading for heading for the bank up here. Big those monsters are until you right in them. It can be almost a hundred degrees out here, but the humidity makes it feel twenty degrees hotter. The only way out of here is up. But the rainy season means this volcanic rock will be as slippery as ice. All of this rock here, all the way up, is really slimy. I can use a treat just to keep off the rock. I've just got to hope this tree will take my weight. Fall out of a tree, land straight on a cactus, on a precipice. Place I got myself into. And if you know where to look, there's food to keep you going. One of the many good things about these Mapani trees is that they're covered in these Mapami worms. Here you go. See this guy? And these worms will only live on this tree. What they feed off are all of these leaves. Uh, but these will grow into these like big moths. But they are edible. Absolutely loads of them. Two under there. Look, let's cook them up. I've got this can that I found from the banks of the river. And what I can do with this is make like a little stove. And if you ever needed to. Once I get the stove going, it's going to get hot really quickly. So I want to get these worms ready to go on them. And what you do is grab it by the head and then just squeeze. And all of the gunk will then come out the bottom. I can't eat them raw because they're covered in some seriously prickly hairs, which could damage your throat. This is really hot now. Get these on. Packed with small pieces of kindling, my makeshift stove really pumps out some heat. And this one should be done, I think. Good 
tastes exactly how you'd imagine a char-grilled, brightly coloured worm full of warm pus would taste. struggles out here is just getting water that you can drink that's fresh and one way of doing that when you've got long grass is just collecting the dew. Take my shirt off, tie that then. This is an old trick I picked up from an army friend. In thick dew it should soak up plenty of water and this should be wet enough now. And they always talk about water tasting like fresh dew. Well, this is like that, but with a hint of sweat. But it worked, it's clean, and it's drinkable. You can get as much as a quarter of a litre in a couple of hours. Now I'm heading deeper into the bush. As it's a rainy season, water's plentiful. Animals no longer need to stay close to the river, and that means you're more likely to get a dangerous surprise. Just an incredible sight. But it's quite an intimidating place. Just feel them all closing in all around now. And it's weird because part of me just wants to back away and run, but part of it's quite mesmerizing. You just kind of feel rooted to the ground. If there are elephants here though, there must be a watering hole nearby. Just the sort of place for giant edible bullfrogs. Go on, have a look at this. You can see them just through the grass. And you know, some frogs will like secrete this poison off the back to deter predators, but this guy's got these big like lower teeth. So I don't want to just try and grab him, I'll end up getting bit by him. But I know what I can do to get him on him. I'm using a branch from a wait a while bush. Get caught on this, and that's just what you'll be doing. Rhodesian Special Forces use this to snare their prisoners and stop them escaping. Hopefully, it will work on my bullfrog. If I can keep up right. Where the hell's he gone? Oh, it stinks. He's got a surface somewhere. Ah, oh, there he is. There we go, we got him. And once he's on that way to big bush, he's not gonna get off it. And that's dinner. And then go get some firewood. And there's plenty of that out here. And let you see what I mean by his teeth. Have a look in there. Don't wanna get bit by those. Okay, let's have some frog's legs. You don't want to eat the skin of these, but the meat inside is good, so all I'm going to do is just kind of kebab it. And what that will do is then burn all of the skin off and leave me with the meat underneath. And yeah, you, you can also eat the, eat the breast meat off that as well. Yeah, there's actually quite a good bit on here. I always like to start with some legs. These look done now. Let's try a bit of this meat. Well, if you're French, you'd love this. But it kind of tastes a bit dirty, really. That's food sorted, and while I've still got plenty of light, I'm heading back into the bush where it'll be safer. This stretch of the river is home to one of the world's largest populations of hippos. And it looks like there's a couple of hippos come up, probably been grazing this nice grass, and then back into the water. But as all the tracks are heading out to the river, I've got time to try and get some food. I've got the inner thread of some string and a couple of hooks, enough to improvise a fishing kit. Right, let's give it a cast. This will make a great float. I just want to move back a bit from the water's edge. It's not only fish that live in this river. There's plenty of cover here for a croc to lay up. And you know, whenever you're fishing on the banks of Zambezi, always keep 
facing the water, never turn your back on it. Any croc attack will always come from the side. They're opportunistic killers, but they're mostly nocturnal, so I should be safe until dusk. Yeah, look, we got something. A little catfish. Awesome! All right, let's get him on a dry land before he gets off the hook. And that's one of the reasons there's so many crocs in this river. It's so full of these sort of things, but much bigger. But that is going to be something good to eat. The catfish is ready to go. Put him along like this, and then he's not going to burn. He's not directly over the flames, and a good way of judging a good distance. If you're going to hold your hand there for about five seconds, and then, whoa, then it gets too hot. That's about right. It's like eating warm mud, but it's protein and it's good energy. And I've got everything I need here. I've got warmth, I've got shelter, and I've got food. And a pretty awesome soundtrack to listen to whilst I eat it. The sound of Africa. I'm in the bush in Zambia, in the heart of Africa. I've spent the night sleeping under this baobab tree as soon as I've eaten, I'm heading into the mountains. Okay, we've got some bay and bad fruit. And these fruits are great, you know, baboons will enjoy this. It's a staple food across Africa. And this really does have loads of vitamin C in it. And look, you see it looks like kind of crumbly cheese, but it tastes like just dried out cheesecake. My favorite. Time to get moving. Okay, I'm gonna take this. And then over there, you can see where I'm going to, it's Scotland. Yeah, really, Zambia showing me Africa at its most beautiful. But it's also showing me Africa at its most, most dangerous, its most wild. But for me, it's definitely time to be heading home. Have at your disposal to create obstacles between you and the dog. You've got to outsmart the dogs. Either find shelter like inside a car or get to higher ground. Get to the studio! Get up! Get up! 